coaches. Today, before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, CoachPad. Uh, no matter if you draw scout cards by hand or use a program on your computer, CoachPad will give you back time by never stuffing a binder again before heading out to practice. First 13.3-inch electronic device allowing coaches to clearly display scout cards outdoors in the sun has been a game changer for programs this past fall and those currently playing all across the country. This new technology allows coaches to coach and not the monotonous task of stuffing and dealing with binders on the practice field. Check out the Coach Pad and Coach Pad Mini on thecoachpad.com. Please make sure you check out our sponsors, our affiliates, and here is another episode of the Gap Down Backer Podcast. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Gap Down Backer podcast. Um, today we have, and, and correct me if I pronounce this wrong, Coach, uh, Jesse Salazar, uh, the offensive coordinator at Poway High School out in uh, California. Coach, how you doing? How's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing, doing pretty good. I mean, we, got, we just got done doing our, our my little pre-chit-chat uh, that nobody gets to see. Um, I do with all of our guests. So, um, but yeah. Um, before we get started, Coach, kind of, kind of, I mean, how do you end up at Poway? How did your season go this year? How's everything going? Yeah, um, I ended up Poway. I was coaching a uh, nearby school, kind of actually one of Poway's rivals um, for a couple of years for a mentor of mine, coach I played for. Um, small world ended up meeting uh, the incoming head coach at Poway two years ago, and then uh, went ahead and, and interviewed with him, and we hit it off and got that job. Um, this the COVID year we did pretty good undefeated league champs and then this year uh, a tough year um, lost a lot of guys uh, we, went, we ended up going seven and four total um, made it into the quarterfinals and then uh, uh, had a tough loss to again one of our league rivals in the playoffs Rancho Bernardo um, but it was a good good tough year man I mean we did a lot of good stuff um, really exciting for Poway's future. Good. I mean, I mean, and you're coaching what an all-star game correctly right now. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So I'm going to be coaching and it's called the uh, Alex Spanos all-star game. Um, the Chargers have been putting it on for 30 something years down in uh, San Diego um, in Southern California. Um, it's first the North County versus South County um, type of game. So it's North South mentality deal. Um, so I'll be coaching that originally I offered to coordinate the job, but some things came up. So um, just going to assist assistant coaching right now on the North team for that, for that game. Okay. Um, kind of, I mean, I mean, coaches, we're going to talk wide zone for a little bit. And um, it's something I tried a little bit to run this year. Wasn't our, like a our go-to for us. Uh, no. But I, I know coach, you've kind of invested heavily at least the past kind of two years. Um, and we kind of talked a little bit off screen about this, but why was wide zone uh, kind of your focal point of, of kind of what you did run game wise? Yeah, well, you know, there's there's a couple philosophies that for me that I felt like wide zone is what we need to focus on. Um, one of the guys we got, right, and I felt like no matter where I kind of went, but it's really the guys we got weren't real big guys or they are 190 pound guys or, you know, we get a good one here and there up front on our offensive line. So trying to find a system, something that we could be consistent in year in, year out um, with, with maybe smaller type guys. Um, it was also zone scheme in general, more inside zone, but zone scheme in general, something that I kind of grew up with at this previous school I was at. Um, but the key philosophies for me in the run game was, uh, you know, I felt I always wanted to have a run game that, that could be consistent. Um, why I leaned towards zone, a big part of that was I felt in the gap scheme game, power counter, all that stuff, pullers, whatever we got going on, I felt like there was more potential for negatives to come, right? And my whole deal was, you know what, pass game is going to be big little. It's going to be yes, no. Um, you know, you're going to have some good good ones, but we're also going to, there's going to be some picks involved, some sacks involved, some things we don't want. And we need to try to minimize it. But in the run game, I can't have that happen. I can't have second and 12, right? I need to make sure I got a run game that the bad ones are going to be second and nine, second and eight, you know, give me that, right? 
Yeah. And that needs to be the bad ones for the run game. So I felt that if we can work that, our wide zone is our base. Don't expand too much um, more than we need to. Um, that we could find that kind of consistency and have a consistent ground game. Um, so my two big things were, you know, no negatives, limit the negatives. I don't want any penetration and negatives can't happen. Right. So we got to get our reps at that. Um, doing the same thing, same rules, all that stuff over and over and then uh, explosives. Right. Um, so I felt wide zone was the best thing that we could go to be consistent in the ground game. And then the other deal is just, is just how you set up the whole system. I felt like there's no other base play that unless you're like a fly team or whatever, that, dictated some kind of stretch like wide zone did to the defense that I could play anything else we go to off of it. You know, to me, inside zone is a better play when you're a wide zone team, right? Even if I'm going to go to power, counter, other things, it's a better play when you're a wide zone team, when that's what they know they got to stop, you know? So everyone's got to find their number one play. What's the thing defense knows they got to stop for us? That's wide zone. Um, really fun. Type scheme, you know. So, no, I, I get it. I mean, everybody's got to have their bread and butter. I, I used to work for head coach that power was the end all be all that set up everything else in his offense. And um, we have some coaches in our area that focus heavily on inside zone. Uh, another one of my buddies is a big power guy. Um, it did kind of just depend on what your offensive philosophy is at, at that point. Um, and kind of how, I mean, Obviously, um, we all know Nick Caduti is kind of the, the, the wide zone guru uh, uh, of high school football. Um, yeah. But, I mean, how – before I kind of get into the more details of wide zone, how creative did you get with it? How many different alterations of it, variations, adjustments did you get into it? Because, like, I, for example, like my buddy, I have a – obviously, with doing this, I have some resources that some normal people would not have. Sure. Um, so I, he asked for a bunch of wide zone stuff and I looked through the, the droves of his hard drives that I have and sent him a bunch of variations and clinics and all that stuff on it. But, um, how creative or how much did you build off of it, um, as you were building your system over really a calendar year, because you had to play twice in a year. Yeah. Um, a lot, we, you know, we put a lot on, uh, around our wide zone, a lot of wrinkles, um, as our base, we were a pro style offense, right? So um, we got to do everything we felt to, to protect our number one play and then build everything off of that and build to those explosives. So, you know, when you see, you know, there's, there's so much window dressing, there is a lot of shifts, motions, things, get those edges, you know, as well as putting so much in, for us in a pro style type system where we really committed to it. Um, doing things I think that other high schools probably don't get into where, you know, we're, we're putting stress on our quarterback to read the fronts, check plays, go the other way. I deem, you know, the force defender, the, you know, where we can run the ball, squeezing receivers, all that type of stuff that, so some of those things are things that we're adding to, to the calls, right? We're, Hey, we're, you know, we're going to shift motion this planned. Some of those things are things happening at the, at the line to protect our concepts. Um, Overall, we weren't a simplistic offense. So the, you know, when I say pro style, really think pro style, right? It was, uh, there's things going on there that were, uh, that were not easy as well as in the wide zone play itself, running variations within the blocking scheme, yeah. uh, running, you know, what I call box scheme or push scheme, um, which most people I think kind of run one or the other, right? because we majored in it so heavily, we ran box scheme and we ran push scheme. We got to get in our verbiage, right? For us, of how we get to those, how we declare who we got. Um, but really any variations, versions you've seen or can think about, we probably did it, you know, um, as well as being a multiple personnel pro style team. Um, you know, the play changes a little bit when you start getting into two backs and things like that and start sending the full back call side away whatever if he's a force guy sifting whatever you're doing right um so i mean yeah we we were we were heavy heavy uh in our multiplicity of the play okay now i want to jump back before we get into more specifics of the play because obviously there's eighteen thousand reading goals adjustments as you yeah. kind of just mentioned um 
we, you know, we talked off air, and I, I, don't, I can't remember if we mentioned it to start this, is you, since you're in California, you guys had pretty much back-to-back seasons. Like, yeah. you played five games in a scrimmage in the spring that you were done really late spring, and then turn around two and a half months later, three months, you're playing again. Um, yep. Do you think that helped you or hurt you? And do you, in uh, just, uh, in, and I mean that obviously there are a lot of factors that injuries, scheduling, blah, blah, but when I'm, especially when, cause I'm a former offensive lineman. So that's kind of where I go. Do you think that helped or hurt your offensive lineman in general? I mean, you're talking techniques. Now I know you had a lot of staff turnover from in that three month period, but mm-hmm. do you think that helped you hurt your kids in terms of comprehending stuff, techniques, um, the system, yeah. all that stuff. Um, for us, it's kind of hard to speak on for, from that one year to the next. I, I think overall it hurt us. I think it hurt, you know. Um, for us, we had one returning lineman coming back this year from that spring, that five spring game season. Um, so, you know, we had four seniors for that for that spring season, and then we, we had one sophomore on that line that came back as a junior this year. So being able to tell for us at the varsity level – um, where that, you know, if that hurt or, or uh, helped us, it was hard to tell. We got one guy to kind of judge that on. But, um, you know, otherwise everyone else is playing on JV or whatever, you know, lower levels. Um, I think, I think uh, overall, um, you know, I would have preferred an off season, right, where we could have <laughs> said, hey, we're going to have – because I'm a guy that I'm big with the offensive line in my background, so I'm just like – you know, I would have loved having an offensive line camp. We're going to get out there, you know, once, twice a week, at least maybe in the off season, and we're going to roll through all this stuff and we're going to be really dialed in. I think for us personally, going that season to the next, it was, we had so many new guys that weren't, that weren't returners. Right. So that experience that we just had didn't really help right with me and the varsity staff and stuff. And, and then not to mention our, our turnover. So it was, you know, it was kind of a, it was tough, you know. Yeah. It was tough. I don't, I don't think it really helped us. No. Yeah. Now, like, like I, I mean, you mentioned you're big on the offensive line, and and we talked a little bit about this off air. How specific did you get in turn, or do you get in terms of offensive line footwork and aiming points? Like I and, and we talked a little bit. Everybody's a little different. Some coaches are down to the hand placement, footwork. Like you're taking this step, that step. Other coaches, the hand placement's still there, but maybe the footwork is a little more, depends on the kid a lot yeah. more. I mean, everybody adjusts to their kids a little bit, but I think that it's this step, that step. How specific do you guys get with the aiming points, the footwork, the hand placement? So um, naturally I'm pretty detailed. So whatever we're teaching them, you know, I don't think there's a lot of times I'll give them options, right? I'll give yeah. them, hey, right here, you can do one of these two things, you know, and for a kid, I might, you know, I might give him some different options, but, uh, but it, it's, it's something we definitely taught him and drilled, you know, I went from originally where we were, were heavy inside zone team where it was, you know, drop step and, and lead step and whatever. And here's, and I'm still, so, so our aiming points, yeah, we have our aiming points, right? Covered, uncovered. If you're uncovered, here's your aiming points. If you're covered, here's your uh, here's your aiming points, hand placement, all of it. We're very specific about all those details. Um, the one thing I'll just say, because I know everybody asks when I talk about wide zone or anyone's talking about it, is so you bucket, you know, bucket step, drop step, whatever. We went for particularly our our uh, which kind of evolved originally from me kind of figuring out what I wanted to do with the play. Um, we kind of went so just giving our guys aiming points and saying there's certain non-negotiables about what that step needs to be. Right. But so like, if I'm an uncovered man, we don't say, you know, where I was, it used to be, Hey, you're going to bucket step, right? This is, so if you're uncovered, man, you're going to bucket step here. We don't do that anymore. We went third level depth on the offensive line, backed them up more and said, we want you sprinting off the ball, aggressive attacking, coming downhill. So you're going to take that first step and you're running to the screws right? That's your aiming point of that lineman that you're going to combo on, right? Yeah. Instead of taking a bucket step to get your depth, we already got depth. We're off the ball, you know? We got depth. We're going to run now. We're, we're running full speed sprint on this play, right? To coordinate that dance. And we're, we're going to the screws of that guy. So we're pretty detailed though, right? So that step, 
that angle will change, right? And so that's not that we're giving him an option. When we put that tape on, right, we could say you either did it right or you did it wrong. There's a detail, there's a way you got to do it, but the look of the technique might look different depending on what we get. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Now, you know, building all that, like, obviously, I mean, that, that talks about the offensive line, uncovered, covered. Um, how, I mean, where do you start offensive line wise, drill wise, teaching wise with the wide zone? Yeah, so the first things we kind of start with getting into the wide zone play with the offensive line is I think the, the first piece is they got to understand the mentality of the play because we get into situations where, you know, they don't – there's a lot of things that linemen are taught, right, that that is totally apl uh, applicable. But we get in the wide zone, it's like first thing, right, they're all coming off in there and it's, and it's a total – vertical type pound that they come off in right so we have to start to break them of some habits like not you're not vertical pound you know what i'm saying but they'll come off like a pound like it like they're running inside zone but put it on an angle so the first thing we do just so they understand the mentality talk about the get off right so we'll do some edd type stuff where first thing you know we'll just get them you know we're on air no pads whatever and we're just doing sprints right we're just doing sprints. We're going to take our first step and we're sprinting, right? Sprinting, elbow tight, you know, thinking about our backside catch hand, all that type of stuff, throwing our helmet. Um, so we'll do sprints as kind of a base day one thing. So we start move, getting on the run. Um, the other thing we'll do, and then we'll, then we'll start to fit them up, right? Okay, now here's contact piece. Fit them up. Okay, here's what it feels like. Here's where your head placement should be. Here's what the backhand is, right? Here's where, you know, our elbows are. Here's where our, our back legs got to go. So we just get in a fit. So we go from on air sprints. Then we go to a fit, okay, without contact to a fit. And now we tell them get to from zero to 100, right? We want to, now we're in a fit, get to that sprint, okay, against force. And then um, we teach everybody how to block one-on-one, -on -one, right? So we teach everybody how to do a base block on the front side of the play. Everyone's got to be able to make that block because we don't think it's a difficult one. Anytime you're one-on-one, -on -one, that's, uh, that's not ideal, right, for a lot of our guys. But we all got to be able to work the technique of that block, and we think we, we, can, we can work it if we do it right. Um, and then we got to teach everybody how to run, cut, and, and do or reach and do what they got to do on the backside of the play and work the one-on-ones on the backside. Um, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of other steps, big progression, but – Sprints, getting off the ball, the fit drill, getting zero to 100, working the play with speed, and then um, and then working those base blocks, then we go to combos. Yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, and, and everybody coaches different, and I, I'm curious about this from a practice standpoint. How much indie time, run pods, inside run team, how do you break that up in terms of your offensive practice schedule? Because I know some coaches that, don't, that do a lot of indie, and a lot of team and not much inside run. I know some that do a lot of indie and a lot of inside yeah. run group, whatever you want to call it, not much team or like a, a whole mix mash of it. Like how do you guys structure it so you can be successful, especially run game wise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of depends on what your setup is. Right. So, you know, do you got two offensive line coaches? Do you got one? Right. Um Think, did you have offense line camp in the summer, right? Did you, or whatever, things like that. Um, so just kind of always evaluate and see how much time you need. So I keep it kind of flexible. I think as a base, we tend to, I'll do less individual time as the week goes on, right? Yeah. So Monday is going to, for us, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I didn't get Thursdays. Um, our offensive practices this year in particular as well, haven't ever done it before, but this year in particular, we had, kind of longer offensive practices because we didn't get meeting time this year, right? We didn't get meeting or installation time, which was just a, a structural issue, but um, wasn't designed that way. But so because of that, we had some more time. So this year we had the luxury of kind of making sure we always had 15, 20 minutes of indie and a 15 minute like inside or uh, inside runner nine on seven period. And then our teams, our, our team I is always sat around probably 30 minutes a day is what we had for team. Um, I think for me though, in general, again, 
I try to load the individual time early in the week, right? Reintroduce our fundamentals. Tuesday, right, for us is more keying in on the exact stuff that we need to be able to adjust to. So Monday is blocking all the base fronts and everything uh, with our, with our, just our EDDs, our indie time. Then we'll go to a nine on seven period, right? Where it's base stuff, day two. Now we're hitting all those stunts and everything that we're getting from them. Um, and then day three for us is kind of really heavy inside zone, or I mean, sorry, uh, inside run or nine on seven period and then team time. So just less as the week goes on. I'm constantly, if I'm not coaching the offensive line, communicating with our offensive line coach of, hey, how much time do we need for this? Um, but the big thing, I think, you know, ideally if you have two offensive line coaches, just getting guys to be repping their stuff all the time. Hey, you're working front side combos. You're working backside combos. You're working front side base blocks, backside cuts. We got to work, you know, just getting all those reps at it. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a summary on kind of how we broke that. Now, now you mentioned defensive fronts and stuff there. What were common adjustments or how did people try to attack you and take away your wide zone? as the season goes on, um, what did you kind of see were the, the wrinkles that they gave you? Right. There was a couple things uh, that, that, that was pretty common, um, which for us and what we saw, um, one thing I will say is, you know, there was, there was a lot of tape we would put on in teams because of what most people are running. You see all the four eyes and stuff, you yeah. know? Nobody ran that against us, right? So that helped us because nobody want to do that against us um, when we're running outside. But what people would get into a couple similar fronts. They'd either, if they were a four down team, typically they'd get into what I call a solid front, but they'd be in basically a three, five, and a nine of the same side, right? So they just want to, they'd be in a three, five, and a nine. And then, you know, their Mike Backer being like a, a 10 or something. That gave me that gave me first a problem with how we ID things, because the way we ID'd who we were comboing to yeah. for our line up front in our base box scheme, that gave us a problem. If we I left his rules the same, we would screw it up. Right. Um, so and so, you know, when it, we knew we were going to get it, but that was something that we had to then communicate to our kids yeah. of how we block it. Also, I mean, it's just not something you where you want to run to three, five, nine over there, right? And then they got strong safety zone on you. What the hell? I'm not going over there, right? Um, especially when so many teams that are tight end based teams in the area are all strong running teams. Nobody really run not a you know a lot of weak side people. stuff. Yeah, I mean, we did, but not many people did. Um, then there's um, you know, and then from that stuff, right? Everybody, no matter the front, that's one front that we kind of saw a lot, but what a lot of people did, right, is they tried to make the read bounce, okay? So they'd get in whatever their front was, say that was the, say it was the same front. They're just doing a full slant and send the mic over the top, you know what I mean? I mean, they would just okay. scrape it like The better teams though, right, would try not to really change what they're doing too much. The better teams we played would truly not try to change their fronts and stuff. What they'd really do is they, I mean, just technically, with the way they taught their backers to run underneath, right? Shoot certain gaps, the way they played our combos and our box scheme stuff, that's where they made better adjustments, right? Yeah. Where they were trying to like, where they were trying to stunt and scrape and all that kind of stuff and just throw shit at us. That wasn't usually the most successful deal, you know? Yeah. Now, how, how did you answer some of those problems? Was it with like a cat, some sort of other play? Was it play action? Was it, attacking the short side instead i mean because technically you can't you can't do that um yeah. how what was your just general adjustment to some of these problems that you started seeing as the year went on sure so we we try to not carry especially as a big emphasis this going into the year two trying to really you know every year you try to perfect what you're doing and uh and evaluate what you're doing trying to have make making sure that every concept and everything that we carried and exchange and motion and whatever everything that we carried it's there for a reason and it's there to be an answer right to something that we're, we're probably going to get right so only carry what you need right and then get good at that now that means we still had you know a lot of concepts but so for example i mean certain things right like whoever i had because i called plays from the from the field this year 
um, like the guy I had in the booth, one job he's got, right, is tell me how those linebackers are playing. When I got a lot of linebackers starting to run underneath, right, um, or shoot gaps, essentially, right, we go, okay, we need to run our toss game, right? So yeah. we'd start going, okay, okay, we need to run toss. and But we wouldn't run it. We had our truck kind of crack toss stuff where we're going outside, but we also just got, no, we're still just running wide zone, right? But we're just running this exchange, just a different exchange for us, right? So we got a certain play by that linebacker, right? Then we'll go to our toss stuff where we're still running wide zone. We could still make the one cut behind that guy. And that guy's going to over pursue and overflow now and run over the top and not be coming down and attacking that gap like he is on the normal wide zone play. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, cool. Right. We start getting rotation. We have the ability one. So, you know, another thing teams might try to do, right. They try to roll late because for us, we'll check, right. We see a blitz coming here or something's coming here. Our quarterback can check the play and go the other way. And now we're running weak or whatever we're doing. Right. So we had that ability. So they try to disguise it though, and kind of show it late and whatever. So it might just be a cadence thing. Right. So what we say is, okay, now we're going to, now we're going to alter our cadence, right? Give a dummy cadence, whatever we're doing, because that guy's going to have to go at some point. You know what I mean? So the quarterback can use cadence at the line. So I, I, you know, I'll just tell him, Hey, you know, when I call this, you need to call it on a dummy, right? And then check, see if they're rotating, see what they're doing. So now you can go, okay, you know, whatever our call is. Right. So now we can get into those checks at the line. Right. Yeah. Um, some of it for us, right. Depending how, people were playing certain things was um, just to, again, a cadence thing was to go on our, go on first sound, cut out all the ships in motion crap and go on first sound, get on the line and throw them off. Cadence was actually a huge thing for us this year that gave us tools to counter some of the things people were doing, you know, when they're trying to confuse our combos and whatever and stem the front, right. And get in, move their shit around. We say, okay, you're going to be in the wrong spot. We're going to go first sound, and now you're screwed. And then they, we get them out of that. So if their adjustment was, we're going to screw up all their combos and stuff by moving before the snap of the ball and play into their cadence and predict it, right? Okay, we're going to go on first sound now, so you're screwed up. You know what I mean? And then with the wide zone, we got you sitting there like a slug, and now we're getting the reach on you. You know what I mean? So cadence was huge. Um, uh, you know, certain things, if guys were uh, – certain fronts we're getting where um, where they do want to have that that like that three five nine we might go you know certain things we'd go crack toss right so we bring a receiver down to crack the guy get outside of him when we're getting bare looks things like that um, it might be it might just be getting to a different base play right our, our inside zone when we are getting strong over pursue right to the wide zone side now it's time for our tight zone which our inside zone is really it's, it's tight zone you know uh, where we get to our tight zone and we can roll the play back. Um, obviously, what everybody's always watching in the zone stuff, that backside end or edger, right, whoever he is, can get into the bootleg game. So he may be getting into the bootleg game based on how they're playing. Um, you know, there was a – and then off of the bootleg game, we have our, we have our stuff because they know they, two things. They got to defend our wide zone and they got to defend our bootleg, Right. So all of a sudden you start to see your backers, right? They go, okay, wide zone, no bootleg, but they're predicting bootlegs. So then we got to have our play action concepts, right? Off of that, that work against the flow of the backers predicting the bootleg play now, you know what I'm saying? So whatever that, if that was white cross back or whatever, Yankee concept, whatever people call it, you know, um, depending how you package it. Yeah. Uh, but the key is for sure, you got to make sure you got enough answers, right? to counter everything that you might get which we might carry 30 concepts right but to us you know it's really the key is making it simple for the kids and to them it's the same play you know yeah. just a different change or a different motion or a different whatever now you, you mentioned two things there i want to build off of is first you talked about running back reads let's, let's talk a little bit more detail that what how do you teach the running back read in the wide zone i don't think that's something that's really I don't know, talked about a lot. I mean, most people focus on the O-line portion, which mm -hmm. is obviously makes sense. I mean, if you don't block it up front, it's pretty hard to do anything. Yeah. But, I mean, when you're, when you're talking running back play, how do you look at reads? Uh, what do you tell them to read? Because I know some people have, like, a double read where you read first guy outside the tackle to the next guy, whether it be 
full cutback, straight cutback, run to the edge. How do you teach so, that? Talk about that. So here's where we teach the running backs. And, and I've also been around and seen, there's a lot of guys that don't teach the running backs anything. They just say, yeah. be an athlete. And know, which <laughs> great. Great. But so here's what we teach them. We, we teach them their footwork. They take a rocker step and they're down. They're running at the butt of the tight end or the, or the butt of the ghost tight end, right? If we're running to an open edge. Um, their, their eyes are on the defensive end. Okay, they're on the DN. So if we get a backer, like we get that, that front I was talking about, we get that five technique and nine technique. We don't read that nine technique Sam linebacker, right? We read the defensive end. To us, if there's a backer on the ball outside of that end, he's already a he's a contained player. We're not gonna, we just we don't read him, right? We don't read that guy, we read the defensive end. So we read, we have our eyes on the DN. We simply say the DN goes out, you're in. He's in, you're out, right? Then you're, he's your first read. Are the secondary reads the next down lineman inside, right? Okay. So he's out, your eyes shoot here, right? He's out, you're behind that. But we tell them, okay, you're running at the butt of the tight end, and it does get into the offensive line because we tell the offensive line to define the read for the running back, and the way we teach their mechanics and what their assignments are. It's the offensive line's job to not screw their running back. They must define the read for the running back. But the running backs told, that's your read, right? Live with your read, deal with it. Because again, in our run game, it can be no negatives, right? No negatives. We got to get yards. Um, he's taking, really, it's about a five-step course is where he ends up making his cut. We tell him, you'll know, and he'll know if you run it right up front. He'll know what his read's going to be about the third step at yeah. that point. We don't make the cut really until about the fifth step or when you know when you press the heels of the offensive line um it's your job we tell the running back it's your job to dictate the flow to the defense right so stretch the edge dictate the flow press the heels of the line then get down the pipe and if you're a good team right most of the time a lot of times if your running back's being disciplined and he's taught well a lot of times you're going to be making a cut yeah um, is what's going to happen, you know, um, which we didn't do as, as good at this. We weren't as good at that consistently this year as we had the previous year um, just for some issues. But but uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of um, just comes down to being being on your running backs, man, coaching those guys up. There's too many times I dealt with. Well, you know, I can't yell at him. He's our most talented guy, man. He's the he's the star of the whole team. It's like, no, you need you need to get on his ass, you know. If you, we get five yards, then okay, you, you're good, you know. Just I won't say anything. That was my rules. A coordinator and he the running back screws up, but we got five yards. I'll keep my mouth shut. But running back coach needs to go talk to him, you know. Yeah. But if but if he made the wrong read and we didn't get those five yards, I'm friggin' on his ass, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. We try to keep it simple. You're going to the butt of the tight end. Your eyes are on the defensive end. Okay. He's out. Then you're in. He's in. You're out. And then we jump back inside and get down the pipe. Flow through the smoke, as Caduti says, right? And get down the pipe um, and, live, and live with it. Live with that read. Do not hesitate. Don't belly it. Don't bounce. Don't banana it, right? Because that's the death of it. We want to get down the pipe. Okay. Now, uh, now I, you hit it on our point, like uh, uh, probably five minutes ago, about your coach in the press box. And this is, I think, something I struggled with this year. So it's, it's kind of become this thing I want to ask about is, what did you tell your press box coach to look for? Did you give him anything to take up with him? Did you – was he writing anything? What, 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 what was your press box coach in charge of on offense? Yeah. It's probably something I could have been better with, too, is giving him a little bit more – um instruction but um essentially his first his first job depending on who you got up there right is kind of the different capabilities but um his first job is obviously during a game I, I want down and distance as a court as a play caller right away just he's checking it for me I can obviously kind of see it but he's ensuring that for me. um down and distance right away so I can get get the next call out, especially in our offense. It's essential. I kind of know and so I can get my call out and I get the calls out pretty quick, but we got some long play calls and 
post off and so shift in motions and stuff. I need to get the call out so he can get it on the field and they, we can get going, especially when we're checking the line and all that kind of stuff. Um, but his job is first down and distance. Secondly, I, his job is always to be checking what the base reactions of the defense are in our for like for our wide zone play. Like how are those backers playing it right? Um, um, are, are they rotating right to try to get a free force player there? Um, you know, I don't put one thing I know it used to be where I used to coach was the box job or, you know, box coach's job. Your job is to, is the end respecting boot. Is he respect, is he run? What is it? I don't like putting that on the coach in the booth. Um, having done it. Cause he's got a lot of things he's looking at. Obviously, you know, I want to know for that, from that box coach, I want to know, is it the fronts that we expected to get? Right. If not, what is it, right? Is it the coverage we expected to get? If not, what is it? Um, and how, what is that reaction? And then for me, it's a automatic anytime I have some kind of rep motion or fly motion or, you know, how are they reacting to all that stuff? Are we holding these guys on the backside? Did they not, right? Do we need to go to some of our play motion stuff with that? You know, are they rotating? All that kind of stuff. The one thing I'll say about the defensive end deal, um, like, hey, is it his job to tell me if that backside is respecting boot or not? I put that on the quarterback, tell the quarterback, right? Quarterback's job for me, you come to me when I'm giving you that next play call, hey coach, they, he ain't there, right? Um, and I think the court, that's a way to get your quarterback to buy into really selling that fake a little bit more, right? Yeah. And that's your job, every play, right? Your job is to come to me and tell me if it's there or not. And that gives them a little bit of ownership of it, right? They're going to burst out for three steps, right, out of that fake because they, they want to they wanna find out if he actually is there or not. Because they know if they come over the sideline and tell me, coach, you ain't there, then I'm going to be calling a boot, you know. Yeah. And they want to pass the ball. They're waiting to pass the ball, you know. So um, that's one thing I, I, I think is I think is pretty cool deal if coaches can do that. Um, but the box coach, yeah. So I give him down the distance. I give him. It's an automatic check for him, certain motions and things. Are they respecting it? Um, are they rotating coverage? Are the fronts what we expected? Is the coverage what we expected? Other than that, I haven't done – I mean, I think that's pretty – I haven't really done anything more than that for him. Okay. And, and the last question I got for you, Coach, before we get going, um, and this is kind of a, a question one of my buddies want to know is, what formations did you guys primarily run out of or did you have most success or enjoy running them out of? Uh, where was your kind of focal point formation wise? Obviously you said you're more pro style this year, but what'd that kind of look like in a little bit more detail? Yeah. Um, I will say, I think the formations that we kind of ran frequently um, changed between year one, year two, based on kind of personnel and just who we were and what we needed to do. Um, so like, for example, um, you know, this year, this past year, we were more two back than we were year one. So um, formationally for us, we started running a lot more weak lead wide zone this year. Yeah. Um, uh, way more than we did the first year. Um, just again, because I think in the area, I mean, everyone's trying to defend the strong run game. And I mean, for us, for us, the way what we teach is our force play, which is a variation of our wide zone, lead wide zone strong. To us, if I got in two back slot, right? and ran to the slot weak, but set the fullback there, it's for us was technically, it was like a strong wide zone play. But the way teams would stunt it and stuff, it was like, I don't know, they just didn't figure it out. Like they didn't, they weren't defending that play. You know what I mean? Um, so that this year we ran a lot of that. This year we had a lot of success, a lot. I think it was our, our best average run actually on the year by just simply getting in, a, we got into a, like a quads formation, we called it box, right? Where we just, you know, we had four guys lined up, you know, in a square, in a box, right off the tackle, right? So it was one, two, three, four, right there. And we ran to the quads, um, you know, and we had tremendous success with that um, yeah. all year. We'd run, you know, we would run, we'd run toss that way to the quads. We ran split out of that split flow, inside zone, whatever. Um, but that wide zone play, we had a tremendous success um running into that quads permission this year um otherwise um 
some stuff that we did a lot this year in particular um, was in our 11 personnel. We would, we kind of got in a lot of, because teams would personnel things, right? Defensively kind of personnel things for what we were putting out there um, and their checks for defense. We ran a lot of what I would say 21, 21 personnel versions of wide zone, split flow wide zone out of 11 personnel. So what I mean by that though is, you know, we got our receivers a lot more involved where we might start in like two by two 11, right? And we'd take the slot and we'd shift them over to make it three by one tight end trips, right? Um, which for us helped us in some ways because defense was automatically just take that backer, like I was telling you, right? They try to put that backer in a nine technique on the ball, whether they were an odd team like most do, or even if they were an over four down team and they'd take that backer, they'd apex him. So immediately if they didn't check it correctly, we got nobody on the tight end, right? We got a five technique and an open edge, right? That slot now that, that we just shifted over, he's got to block that guy. But then we take the outside number one receiver. So we're in tight end trips now that we shifted into. We take the number one receiver, squeeze him back in short motion, and he'd run the backside sip block. So if you're looking at that from the snap of the ball, really that's just like wing, like 12 personnel or two back, right? And it's just outside zone or wide zone with the sip block with a condensed number one receiver. That's what the play is, right? But we did a lot of that this year. Because of the personnel on the field, we were able to set a lot of good play actions off of that. We were able to get their nickel personnel on the field, right, when they didn't really want to. We got to be able to shift and motion them to where we were keeping the play alive, you know, despite what they were trying to set us in. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we did – this year we did a lot of that. Okay. Well, Coach, I think, I think we're going to leave it right there. I think if, if coaches – that are listening, watching, where, I mean, however you're, you're partaking in this, um, his Twitter and his email will be in the bio. So please check that out. Um, this will probably come out after his all-star game. Um, otherwise, I'd say check that out um, for anybody that's local or that has the ability to check that out. Um, obviously, uh, the tags and stuff will be in the bio. So if there's any point you want to look at this, um, I, I have like 10 or so tags just written down just off of as just as we went. I mean, there'll probably end up being more. Um, other than that, uh, like, share, subscribe, check out the affiliate sponsor stuff below, as always. Um, and, and thank everybody as normal for um, listening slash watching uh, stuff on the YouTube channel as we start this uh, spring off season filming podcasting, clinicking, all that lovely stuff. So thank you.